Onoko HQ. And today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to build a simple Chrome extension without code using your Bubble application and our Chrome extension for Bubble uh, package builder um, that we offer. And the Chrome extension that we're going to build is going to be a really simple one. But what it's going to do, it will allow you or allow the user to highlight a certain word on a page, any website, anywhere. And then in the Chrome extension, um, the user will be able to get a definition of the word he highlighted. So something really simple. But the goal of this is to just show you um, how to connect uh, all the parts of the Chrome extension to your Bubble app and kind of create a functioning Chrome extension. So obviously what we, we will need will be a Bubble application. You will also need our Chrome extension um, builder. So you can get that at chrome.nokuhq.com. You can purchase um, the package. Um, follow the steps. We have another tutorial explaining how to set up everything. Um, get get the build, um, get the plugin in the Bubble plugin store, and then you're good to go. Um, we're assuming that you did this, everything uh, regarding these steps. And um, what we have here now is uh, our application called just, and we have a page here, Chrome, this is the uh, page that we submitted in our build. And this is where we're going to build our Chrome extension. And also we have the uh, plugin which you will need the Google Chrome extensions plugin which is available in the bubble plugin store and you will also want to drag this uh, plugin element onto this page we did it as well already so search for the element Chrome extension simply drag it onto the page and you should be good to go also keep in mind when you submit your build you will have to define the width and height of your um, extension itself in this case, we defined the width of 600 pixels and a height of 500 pixels. So this is set now. We're going to make this fixed width and we're going to work with this. Okay, awesome. So um, let me just actually change the background color to make this, make it a bit optic uh, nicer. So what, what are we going to do? We are going to um, implement um, a simple Chrome extension where a user will be able to highlight any word on a specific website. And uh, with our, the help of our plugin, we'll, you will be able to read this highlighted or selected word into your Bubble app, where we can then perform various actions. And what we're going to do, we're going to use a free dictionary API um, just for demonstration purposes to allow the user to automatically get the definition for the word he has highlighted. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to simply use this API here, free dictionary API. Uh, we're just going to need this endpoint, no um, authentication required, so super simple, and we're just going to focus on English words. So I'm going to head over to plugins here in Bubble. You will need the API connector. I'm going to add another API. I'm going to call it um, dictionary. Um, let's create this first API call here. Let's um, paste the value here. Um, I believe it is a, I think it's a post request where we can try. So post request, the name is get definition. We want to use this as an action, okay? However, we could also use it as a data, but let's try with an action first, okay? And obviously, we don't want to get the definition for the word hello. We want to get dynamic definitions, so we're going to use parameters, so square brackets, and then we're just going to enter the word here, and this will be the parameter that will be passed from our bubble application, okay? It will not be private, and we can just pass a test value, so I don't know, car maybe, okay? Now, all we have to do is initialize this call, Let's see what response we get. Okay, um, I think wrong call method. We need a get call. Okay, let's try it again. And perfect, now it works. So you get uh, a lot of data back. So we get the word again, which we added, of course, car, phonetic. Okay, uh, even how you pronounce that, quite interesting. Um, the, the place where the audio is safe. Let's actually try that. Um, let's add it. HTTPS there. So this API gives us the, the correct pronunciation. Let's try that. Call. Perfect. We can add that in our Chrome extension as well. So we get the data here of uh, the audio. We get the origin of the word and uh, we get the definition and even example. So really great API, to be honest. Um, and we can use all this information on our Chrome extension. So let's click Save. OK, just check if these data types are correct. But that's text for all of them. OK. And then we're going to head over to design. And again, we want to keep this really simple. Obviously, you can uh, build really complex Chrome extensions with our uh, integration. But we just want to give you a simple demo um, just to show you how to set something up like this. So what we're going to do is we will um, 
So there's multiple ways you could do this now. So first of all, just to uh, show you, let's add a button here, okay? And this button, if we start at a workflow, we can head over to element action and you see all the actions you have for a Chrome extension. So this is something you will have to um, trigger yourself. In this case would be um, get the highlighted text of a Chrome extension, okay? So two things we could do, we could add a button here and the user would have to manually get the highlighted text. In this case, I think that wouldn't make sense. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna add a workflow. I'm gonna say, all right, so let's add a workflow here general. When the page is loaded, I wanna automatically get the highlighted text of the Chrome extension, okay? In our experience, it might be um, due to some delays, it's, it might be helpful to add a pause before this. So add a pause before next action, maybe a thousand milliseconds should be enough. Let's hide the status bar and let's add the pause before getting the highlighted text. Why? Sometimes we may experience if you if a user highlight a lot of text, um, the actual sending of data um, is too slow and you it doesn't get sent over in bubbles. So just add a small pause. Um, sometimes you don't need it, but just to be safe. Okay. So now let's actually try this out directly. So I'm going to add a text uh, here, maybe a title, and this will say, you have selected. Okay. Let's remove the style, make it white, center, make it bigger. And then let's have beneath this a word. And this will be dynamic. This will be the Chrome extension A's highlighted text. And let's make that bold. Okay, and let's already try this out. So what I did, I installed the Chrome extension already here. I called it um, it's demo, okay, and um, just ignore the logo I have here. And now what I'm gonna do, let's for example go here, okay, um, and let's change the English version. And now let's for example go to, I don't know, let's go here and highlight American, okay. Let's open our Chrome extension called demo. Awesome, so the Chrome extension opens and it works perfectly. It says you have selected American and that's exactly what we highlighted. If we would have highlighted American lawyer, this would be the, the highlighted word. But for this Chrome extension, obviously users should just highlight a single word. Works perfectly fine. It uh, sends over the data from the web page, and this part works already. So let's head back to our bubble application. Now the rest is gonna be quite simple. Let's um, Add a button beneath this, okay? And this button, let's say, uh, sh uh, let's change the style a bit. That looks, that doesn't look too nice. Um, I don't know, get definition or get data or whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, let's also define, all right, so when the Chrome extensions highlighted text is empty, well, then this shouldn't be click clickable, obviously. However, when it's clickable, we want to start at a workflow. And what we want to do, we want to go to our plugins, and now we have our um, the API call that we uh, uh, that we added before, which is dictionary get definition. And all we have to pass is this parameter which we defined called word, and it shouldn't be car; it should be the Chrome extension A's highlighted text. Okay, so we're getting the definition and all the data for the currently highlighted text. Okay, okay, so. What else? Well, quite simple. Let's add a text beneath that as well. Um, let's maybe have it white and let's say, all right, so um, this will be the definition is equal to, in this case, I'm going to work with states. So that's up to you how you're going to do that, but I'm going to add a state here and this will be called the definition of type text. And so it will be definition is equal to uh, the text definitions definition state and then beneath this let, let's have another um, text here which will be uh, I don't know what do we have we had um, origin okay let's call it origin and for the state we're going to change the name to origin okay and this will be the origins state okay uh, I hope you understand what I'm doing this is just custom states um, if you're confused, then I would recommend watching another tutorial that we have about custom states, but quite simple. So let's go back here to this workflow. We're making this API call, and then we wanna set the relevant state. So I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna set state of my origin text, origin state to the result of step one's API call, uh, origins, uh, you wanna say first item, okay? And then another set state action, we wanna 
set the state of our text, uh, what was it? Let's say that, see the name of the text, yeah, text G. Want to set the state of text G's definition to result of step one's API call. Uh, phonetic meanings, what's it meanings? Definitions, first item. Definition, okay. I think that should be good to go. Let's actually just test out if we get the correct data. Let's try that again here. Uh, we're getting the meanings, definition, definition. All right, okay, that sounds correct. So let's just check that again. The meanings, definition, first item, definition, okay. This is just the way this API is structured. So obviously it would depend on if, if you're using an API service or where you're getting your data from, okay? And to be honest, uh, if I haven't made any mistake, uh, we should be good to go. Um, that's all we have to do for this Chrome extension. Obviously what you could do now in this case for this API, we could add an audio player here, which automatically takes this audio file I showed you and placed the, the correct way to pronounce this uh, word. Would also be quite interesting, but we're just gonna stay with this now. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go back here to my Wikipedia page. I'm gonna highlight something else, maybe um, community, okay? I'm gonna open my Chrome extension, which is called demo. Okay, so it looks um, good so far. You have selected the word community, okay? Definition origin is empty, but let's go ahead and get data. Perfect, um, it works. The definition of community is a group of people living in the same place or having particular characteristic in common. And the origin is late middle English from old French, communit, whatever it is. So works perfectly fine, as you can see. Um, we got definition, we got the origin, everything works smoothly. Um, and yeah, we built our first uh, super easy, but maybe quite helpful Chrome extension. Um, while I'm seeing this, I may be thinking it might be a good idea to actually just remove this button here. Why would, do you have to trigger that manually? You could also add the API call just on this page load action and then automatically populate this. So a few things that you could do to modify and improve this extension, but again, we just uh, gave you a simple introduction and that's basically it. That's the great thing about our, our integration. You can build almost all kinds of Chrome extensions um, as long as your bubble app kind of supports this, this um, the use cases. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us by email. Um, and uh, we hope you learned something in this tutorial and see you guys for the next tutorial of NoFHQ. Bye.